All right, so with all the new technology available, choosing a vehicle that's right for you can probably take some time. If you've ever considered gas hybrid or even electric, listen up. I'm excited for this conversation. Our next guest is here to help us weigh our options. We'd like to welcome General Manager of Big Star Ford, Rick Law. Welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, pleasure to be here. This is a really interesting conversation. I'm, I'm one of these people that doesn't really know much about hybrid cars, but I'm very interested in it. Just explain hybrid, because it still uses gas, right? Right. It's a combination gas and electric, electrical lithium batteries. However, most people look at it as saving gas is the reason you'd buy one. And for most people, that would be the case. But the future is going to come up I think a lot on performance and uh, for example NASCAR they're gonna start using it and so the next big selling hybrid you might see might be a performance car like a Ford Mustang oh no way and it's interesting too because I feel like especially when hybrids were brand new they had sort of this reputation for being slow and sluggish you thought of just very specific models probably the Prius was the first hybrid we all became aware of but you're saying we're about to see the game changing radically I, I think so because here's what's happening it's sort of funny uh, Formula One went to all electric and so some of the NASCAR people that were pretty high up saw a lot of people from Germany and what have you at their races and they said why are you here and they said we don't like the silent cars we like the loud noise so they some of the they think that their future might be to get the hybrid in it so it can slow down on the caution flags avoid more fuel stops and when they need another 250 horsepower they have that kinetic uh, energy reduction system that'll boost that car for a a sprint run so interesting they're maxing out at about 740 horsepower some of those cars this hybrid technology could give them an extra 240 oh, wow. to get it up to a thousand wait just for context by the way what yeah. would like a regular sedan horsepower be uh well a mustang gt premium would have about 450. Wow. and and that's a fast car it, it's very it? fast well, let's talk about um, sort of the upside and the downside when we are talking about these kinds of cars. So you say the upside basically is the mileage part of it? The mileage. Uh, the downside might be resale value. Um, and this would go with electric or uh, hybrid. Your battery cost, if you don't have the right manufacturer, if you take the mileage too far, the batteries are still going to be costly. And to replace not, not as bad as they were but like in 07 a f we had to replace a uh, focus hybrid or a battery fifteen thousand oh, dollars for the wow. battery yeah so it's come That's a long crazy. way and I was in Dearborn with the engineers and they said they're right there with the batteries they're they're gonna get better and better and better but the downside on that is 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 that battery gonna be outdated and so what's gonna have to happen is the recyclers of the batteries are going to have to get in with the manufacturing because in Europe right now the battery recyclers they're not a money-making deal it's needed for the environment and everything but they're not getting the lithium out of it for the dollars they're putting into it so I see the recyclers and the manufacturers sort of joining at the hip at some point in time now, I mean, I think one of the big takeaways from this conversation is that obviously buying a car is a big decision. Consumers now have so many different options that they didn't have even a few years ago. And years from now, they're going to continue having more options. Rick, you know I drive an electric car, and I'm a huge fan. I have for years. But you're saying that long term, there are still a lot of things that need to be sorted out before we go to this entirely right. electric future. And we've had a gas culture, so it, it yeah. hasn't taken foot all over the United States. Yeah. Now, and there's a couple things about electric cars. It's 15% more polluting during manufacture, but in six months it can generally outrun that. And then there are states where an electric car, because of the way the coal plants are powered for electricity, that's going to be almost as pl polluting in the long run as a gas car, even though you can't see it. And then there's going to be states like Nevada where sparse population your gas power and your clean energy it's almost going to offset each other the gas and the electric car are going to be pretty darn even but let's say if you're in west virginia or somewhere on the east coast generally your electric car is going to be more polluting than the west the western united states is a lot less polluting than the eastern in terms of 
clean energy. And we do see a lot of utility companies, of course, moving to clean, renewable energy sources. Obviously, uh, Texas is the leader in wind energy, so right. obviously years from now, it's a, it's a game changer, right? It's, it's going to be a different right. conversation a few years from now. And Rick, I thank you so much for stopping by. We you bet. Appreciate it. And for more information, you can call 713 960 9800 or visit bigstarford.com. Great to see you, Rick. Thank you very much. A hybrid Mustang one day. Who knew? Oh, yeah. cool. She's going to be excited about that. <laughs> Coming up.